Hey everybody, Jake here. And today we're going to take a look at the Pilot Quattro. This is a discontinued pen from Japan. Um, obviously Pilot. Um, real quick, I just wanted to kind of preface this video and say this recording is going to be slightly different. Um, I'm going to try to do some more angular stuff instead of just top down just on the desk. So let me know what you think of the uh, video and audio quality. And if you have any feedback, uh, I'd love to hear it from you guys. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and take a look at this pen. Uh, the run through is going to be normal. It's just going to be some different camera angles, like I said. So if there's if there's anything you like or dislike, anything like that, just leave a comment and let me know. Um, and these take a little longer to shoot, but I think it's going to turn out better. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. <clears throat> First up are going to be the specs. <clears throat> uh, fairly narrow, mid-range length pen. Uh, overall length is going to be 5.25 inches or 133 millimeters. So it's a little shorter than some pens, um, you know, capped, of course. But it's not it's not too bad. Um, it, it's a bit like a, a um, like a mechanical pencil kind of size. So the cap is going to be 2.25 inches or 57 millimeters. And you can see I have the fairly long section there. <clears throat> And the body without the nib is going to be 4.25 inches or 108 millimeters. And the nib is going to be 0.75 inches or 19 millimeters. So we're the average size nib. All right, <clears throat> going to jump into some size comparisons here. So um, first up, we have, of course, the Pilot Quattro and that beautiful mint and white color. And I'm just going to bring out some pins that I use fairly often. So first up is going to be the Twisby 580 All. And next up is the Lamy Safari. Both these pins are kind of mid-range on the higher side, mid-range, at least for beginner fountain pens lengthwise. And you can see this one's a little shorter than them. We're going to take a look at them all uncapped. So there's the Quattro again. I love that color scheme on that thing. <clears throat> and we're going to compare it to the Twisby. And you can see it's a little bit shorter, but it's not too bad. Um, however, you can see here especially how narrow the pin is. Um, you definitely feel that. If that's not something you're interested in, take a look elsewhere. And you can see the Lamy Safari is a little bit longer than both of those. <clears throat> I'm going to rearrange them a little bit here. And really the biggest thing about this pin that you'll notice is the narrowness. Um, you're going to feel that when you're using it. You're going to notice it when you're looking at it. It looks longer than it is, but it's really not that long of a pin. Um, and it's very, very distinct styling, as you can see there. And again, it's just a little bit shorter. It's nothing too bad. Um, you may notice it, though. So we'll jump into the stuff I like. First up is going to be the nib. This nib is a fine steel nib from Pilot. Um, and it writes very smooth for a Japanese fine, which um, is kind of like a Western extra fine. And the flow is great. It keeps up fantastic. Um, kind of medium wetness, so it, that helps with the smoothness of the nib some. And it's a very unique looking nib as well. Kind of basically designed, but, you know, it, it works very, very well. Next up is going to be the section. <clears throat> um, the section here, you can see, has some texturing and is eight-sided to help grip a little bit. And I'll show you here, it's fairly long. Um... It definitely, it is, it's not as uncomfortable as some people might assume a four-sided pen would be. And those grooves certainly help when you're trying to grip it. <clears throat> Next up on the like list is going to be the clip. Um, it's beautiful, fits with the pen great, and it's fairly springy. It's not too hard to get over a pocket or, uh, you know, shirt pocket, pants pocket, whatever. Jeans might be pushing a little bit, but it's not too bad. Next up is going to be the, the aesthetics of this pen. It's gorgeous. It has that like retro 50s kind of mint blue green going on with the white. And the chrome accents I'm not a fan of, but we'll go over that in a little bit. But it's just a, a gorgeous pen. The angles and everything they did perfect on. And lastly, the price. I think it's up for about $13. It is discontinued though. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and jump into some stuff I feel kind of neutral about. The build quality. Um, you can see I just unscrewed the pen a little bit from the body. And then when you cap it, it's a little unaligned. Um, you can, of course, twist the cap just to fix that a little bit, but it's noticeable. And some of the angles where the chrome accents meet the body, um, they just don't 
feel for a but I, I'm assuming this is a fairly mid range budget is budget ish pen when it was out. So I'm not I wasn't expecting a whole lot. And the curl and accents kinda get scratchy. <clears throat> and next up is gonna be the weight of the pen. Um for the size, it's a fairly heavy pen. It's certainly noticeable in comparison to something like a big pen or a mechanical pencil. It's just a little heavy, and that is not helped by the posting. Um, it backweights the pen a lot because the section is plastic, and I find it uncomfortable to use in the posted position just because of how backweighted the pen is. It just kind of detracts from the writing experience, even though it looks like it would be very comfortable. And on to the dislike list. Uh, there's really only one thing here, and that's going to be Pilot's proprietary cartridges and converters. So you'll see in here, um, I have a squeeze converter. <clears throat> These are terrible if you've ever used them, but they're free. And this did come with a um, Pilot squeeze converter. This was a new old stock pen, so I, I believe it was from the 90s sometime. <clears throat> so that was included. But as usual, it was just kind of bland. Um, I would highly recommend switching to a Con 40 or Con 50 if you do manage to pick this up. Con 70 may not fit. On to the writing sample. <clears throat> kind of show you how this nib performs. And again, it, it's it's fairly fine. Um, you guys have seen me around the paper before, so you kind of know what to expect. But here's a kind of normal line, then a line with some pressure, and reverse writing line. Um, reverse writing line's fairly thin. You can see there, that skip wasn't the pen, it was me. I don't like writing in reverse. And now I'll show you the medium wetness of the pen as well. <clears throat> it's it's definitely a very nice nib, especially for a fine. I believe this is the finest nib I own and use. Um, it is beaten by the penmanship, but I really don't like that pen. And this ink, for anyone curious, is Pilot and Amiki Black. Um, I've used this in a couple of my reviews so far. It's great black ink, fairly cheap. I highly recommend it. Give you a little bit of a close-up here on the writing just so you can see kind of what it looks like <clears throat> and it looks a little wider here but it, it's it's just a really close tight shot but the the pen writes fantastic i really can't state that enough pilot does a fantastic job with their nibs i haven't used a single pilot pen that i really didn't like so it you know if you're looking for a fine smooth nib pilot is generally the way to go and just to wrap everything up here um, you know, again, give me feedback on the video, the audio, anything like that. Um, I really appreciate it, you guys, all my subscribers, everyone who watches these videos. Um, just let me know what you think. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and keep an eye out for a few more videos coming up soon. Um, I do plan on shooting them like this. They might take a little bit longer, but I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, bye.